The other day I talked in a podcast about ways to make your offer more attractive to a seller in this multiple offer market. I suggested that a buyer who is comfortable with his financial ability to pay on a particular mortgage could submit an offer that is not subject to buyer obtaining buyer approval. That is done by checking the second box under paragraph 2A of the third party financing addendum. After that podcast, I was asked by a viewer to explain the ramifications of waiving the financing contingencies under the contract by first checking the box I just mentioned and then checking number one on the addendum concerning right to terminate due to lender's appraisal, which is the full waiver paragraph. By submitting an offer that is not subject to buyer approval, buyer is waiving his or her right to terminate the contract if either of two things happen. If buyer's credit, assets, and income is not good enough to support the loan, so the lender cannot approve the loan, then too bad for the buyer. They will not have the right to terminate the contract because they can't come up with the money. And if they have no right to terminate, they have no right to a refund of their earnest money and could be subject to suit for defaulting under the contract. Most often, however, before a buyer commits to a contract, the buyer has already gone through a pre-approval process and has a pretty good idea, pending any adverse event like losing a job, that buyer has the required assets, credit, and income. So waiving this contingency may not be a substantive risk for the buyer. The second thing buyer waives by waiving buyer approval is buyer's contingency for obtaining the specific loan terms he or she wants. That is the interest rate, term, and points charged on the loan. When buyer waives buyer approval, buyer is not protected if the interest rates go up significantly between the time buyer has contracted for the property and closing. This may be more of an unknown risk the buyer assumes by waiving this contingency. However, the buyer usually only gives himself 20 or 21 days to establish these terms anyway, and after those days, buyer waives that contingency. After the buyer approval period, the risk of inflated interest rates or points shifts to the buyer. Right now, we are not experiencing a really volatile market as to interest rates and points, so it may not be a problem for the buyer to assume that risk from the execution date of the contract by checking that second box on the third party financing addendum versus waiting 20 or 21 days from the effective date. As to the second part of the financing approval, where the property must satisfy the lender's underwriting requirements, many sellers in this market are requiring the addendum concerning right to terminate due to lender's appraisal and demanding that paragraph one, the full waiver paragraph, be checked. The result and sometimes unintended consequence because of misunderstanding of this waiver is buyers waiving their right to a particular loan amount. That means if the lender cannot give buyer the particular loan amount provided for in the contract because of a low appraisal, the buyer will pay cash to make up any difference. If the buyer has unlimited cash, then that works. What the buyer is not waiving, however, under that uh, paragraph is buyer's right to terminate if other property conditions for satisfying the lender's underwriting requirements are not met. For example, property condition or insurability. Having said that in my recent podcast, I suggested that trying to terminate a contract because the property is uninsurable is tenuous. I submit all properties are insurable at a price. For example, if the property needs a new roof, it can still be insured. The premium may just be set to cover the cost. As to condition of property for underwriting approval, it is often a function of the appraisal, meaning if the property is not in good condition, it will be subject to a lower appraisal. <clears throat> and buyer has waived appraisal under the addendum concerning right to appraisal. In reality, when a buyer waives their right to terminate based on loan amount, he or she is waiving their financing condition based on property approval. The unintended consequence of a buyer who submits an offer without a buyer approval contingency and waiving appraisal is that buyer is basically writing an all-cash contract. When a buyer writes an all-cash contract, if closing does not occur because buyer cannot come up with the money to pay the seller for whatever reason, buyer is in default, subject to all the remedies seller has. Please note, 
Taking the earnest money is not the only remedy a seller has. They can sue for damages. I hope this podcast answers the questions of what the risks are and the unintended con consequences of removing financing conditions under the contract. I appreciate your support in watching our videos. Allegiance Title is your trusted resource for results.